Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense, and today I'm coming at you guys with a fragrance haul. So I've got five different fragrances that I bought, and I'm gonna unbox each one of these, do first impressions on them, and let you guys know whether I think that these fragrances are potentially hype-worthy, or if they are complete crap. These are cheap fragrances. I paid after taxes $125 overall for the five of these. Uh, a couple of these are ones that just caught my eye while I was scrolling through FragranceNet looking for cheapies to pick up. And some of these were ones that people have talked about in the past and said were really good, but I had never smelled them. So I wanted to check them out and see whether I like them or not. So we've got a lot to talk about here today, a lot to look at here today. So let's just jump into this. First off, I guess, let's go over the fragrances that I bought. First up is this one, Joe Milano Paris Levante. I had not heard about this fragrance when I saw Joe Milano. It reminded me of Joe Malone and made me think that's probably some random clone brand. And I wanted to check it out. And uh, Levante is the one that I went for. They had a couple other ones on there as well, but that's the first one I pulled up. After that, we've got Azaro Bright Visit. This is a 30 milliliter size bottle, so just one ounce. This one was on Fragrance Net and Fragrance X both uh, when I placed the order, but since I was buying through Fragrance Net, I uh, threw it in there. And I think that one was only 13, 14 bucks. Azaro Visit is a fragrance that I like as a cheapie, and I was interested to see if that one is any good. That's why I threw that in there. Also got Armoff Hunter Intense. This one I know has been hyped a little bit. I think Cubano really liked that one. It gets compared, I think, to Sauvage, maybe Invictus, not sure. But uh, that Armoff is probably the one that people have asked me about the most other than the Club de Nuit Intense fragrances. People ask me about those ones all the time, so I did the videos for them. And this one is probably the one I get asked about the most outside of the Club de Nuit fragrances. Also got Trissardi My Land. This one, I believe, gets compared to CH Men by Carolina Herrera as an alternative to that fragrance. And I've heard good things about that one. And then lastly, Perry Ellis America. There was also a Perry Ellis America released in, I think, 1996. Uh, that one is a completely different fragrance to this one. So they don't share anything in common other than the name. This one my buddy got, and he said he really liked it, but I still haven't smelled it, haven't checked his bottle out or anything, and this one was uh, very inexpensive for a newer release. This one came out, I believe, last year, 2019. So. That's why I threw that one in there. So I guess let's just work through them in that order. We'll start with this one, Joe Milano Levante. The box has this, uh, so the box here has a felt pattern, almost like you would find on the Carolina Herrera CH Kings packaging. There you go, Joe Milano Paris Levante, Eau de Parfum. Levante on top of the box, nothing on the sides. Little info on the back, and there's the bottom. So the packaging here could definitely use some work. There is some damage here. The cap is not clicking into place, and it looks like there's been leakage. It's actually got a crack in the plastic here. Um, I'll try to show you guys everything. So there's the front of the bottle, Joe Milano Levante. And that looks pretty nice on camera, but we've got some issues up here. Uh, hopefully you can see that there, but there is some cracking right here around the atomizer, and that has caused leaking, which you can see here on the cap. So here's the cap, you can see there what I'm talking about, and it does not really click into place. Here's a look at the bottom of the bottle for you. I know it's very bright, and the back it's see-through. And there's the bottle with the cap on. So this is not great. I mean, <laughs> the bottle is essentially damaged, and uh, the atomizer, the plastic, has, has basically been smashed and that is gonna cause an issue with the atomizer because uh, it can't press down because the plastic that's around the neck here has been smashed in underneath the, uh, the atomizer. So I'm gonna have to try to dig this out. Yeah, I mean, the, the plastic all around this thing is just cracked to heck. It's got little pieces all over the place. So it's got the notes on the box here. Top of black currant, bergamot, apple, and pineapple. Heart of rose, dry birch, jasmine, and patchouli. Base of oak, moss, musk, ambergris, and vanilla. Okay, so I mean, know what this is? This is a, an Aventus clone. Yep, not a bad one though, off the tester strip. I mean, the bottle is annihilated, so that is really 
a bad first impression. The box is okay. If the bottle were not annihilated, I would say it does look kind of cheap, but it looks better than a, a bunch of other Aventus clones out there. So sweet, fruity, pineapple, bergamot right off the top. Not smoky. Vanilla. This is a fruity take on Aventus. I'll spray it on skin. I mean, I'm going to do tester strips for these just because I don't want to spray all over, but I'll just spray that on to see how that compares to maybe some of the other Aventus clones out there. And while that works on my skin, I'll open the next one. So I am now opening Bright Visit by Azaro. There is the box for you, Azaro Bright Visit. Little info on the back, and there's your badge code. The description for this one on the back, Bright Visit, very bright, very visit. Very visit. Dazzling as a summer encounter, fresh, spicy, woody. So there you go. And the Joe Milano Levante, it's an okay Aventus clone. I don't think it's anything really to write home about. It doesn't smell bad though. It is on the fruitier side of things. Black currant, pineapple, vanilla, little musk, not too much birch, not too smoky. There's a little bit of birch in there, but not heavy. Now let's check out Bright Visit and just do a quick first impression, see if this is the type of fragrance that really is gonna grab your attention or not. Off a tester strip, there's kind of an alcohol blast in the opening there. It does smell a little bit cheap. There is a, a big fresh pop here though. So that's nice. Like a nice pink pepper, little bit of black currant in here. A little bit salty, a little bit aquatic. Star fruit in there as well, I believe, which is something it shares with Versace Man Eau Fraiche. After that initial kind of alcohol blast and cheapness kind of dies down, it smells pleasant. Don't dislike it, but I'm gonna let that rest and go into the next one so this doesn't run super long. Next up, we're gonna open up Trussardi, My Land. This is the one that some people have compared to CH Men by Carolina Herrera, which is a very popular fragrance for men. Uh, big date night fragrance for a lot of guys and uh, a great casual wear as well. So here's a look at the box, Trussardi, My Land. A lot of information about the fragrance on the back there and your badge code barcode on the bottom. And there's a good look at the bottle. It is rimmed in leather and then on the bottom your sticker. And it does say right here, genuine leather made in Italy. On the back of the box, a little more information on the fragrance. The perfume bottle is framed by a vegetal tanned natural leather band that is finished by hand. The shading and different nuances make this product unique and beautiful and also confirm the authenticity of its artisan craftsmanship. So they're very proud of the little leather band that goes around the bottle. And interestingly enough, there's a little mark here that says full, and the amount of fragrance in here is actually above that by a little bit. So let's go ahead and give my land. Okay. Atomizer's, uh, it's okay. A little, little different. I can see what people are talking about with the CH men. There's a little bit of a similarity in the opening. Yeah, that's the first thing that it reminds me of. It's not the same as CH Men, but I understand where people are coming from. When you smell it, pick out a little bit of that CH Men vibe, a little bit of that CH Men nuance. So the citrus in the opening here is more like a sweet citrus, a little bit deeper. It's not a bright citrus. It's not a super juicy citrus, at least off the tester strip here. It does smell nice though. Very pleasant, very approachable. A versatile kind of fragrance. One that a younger guy could wear and middle-aged guy could wear, a more mature guy could wear as well. There's a lot of versatility, as I said. It's not too sweet, not too heavy-handed. Tonka comes out, uh, provides creaminess, sweetness. There's a leather in here, but the leather is kind of going back to that citrus, a, a more sweetened take on leather, a more approachable take on leather. Not one of those strong, super masculine leathers, you know, not one of those dark black leathers. This one, like a sweet brown leather. Little touch of florals in here, underneath everything, not too strong. Just a little nuance, a little bit of lavender, a little touch of violet, it's nice. Yeah, I see absolutely where people come from with the CH Men comparison. Uh, it's the same style of fragrance. It's gonna be able to be used in the same sort of situations. It's not bad. This one I like. And now we are on to, I think Hunter Intense is the next one that I brought up. So Hunter Intense by Armoff. 
Here's a good look at the front of the box for Hunter Intense, our MOF. And on the bottom is where you're gonna find your information. This one was made in June of 2019. So that's when my bottle was made. And here is the bottle for Hunter Intense. It's got that you know, weird kind of leather band going around the bottle and your cap right here clicks into place. Wow, that atomizer sucks. That is not a good atomizer. Okay, yeah, I see where people are coming from. First thing that I thought of, the first thing that came to my mind was Invictus. And that's because of that bubblegummy type sweetness. First thing that I picked up off the tester strip was that bubblegum kind of vibe. But then I also got the Ambroxan, the way that it comes off of Sauvage, where it just kind of leaps off of your skin when you spray Sauvage on that metallic, sort of uh, almost salty, warm uh, Ambroxan blast. That's in here too. So to me, Hunter Intense almost comes across like a Sauvage Invictus twist. Like if you took Dior Sauvage, you took uh, Paco Rabanne Invictus, maybe even Invictus Intense, one of those, and mixed it together with Dior Sauvage, the Eau de Toilette of Dior Sauvage, you would get this. I can absolutely 100% see why this would be a really popular fragrance with younger guys. Wanting that kind of vibe, Dior Sauvage, uh, Paco Rabanne Invictus, without spending too much money, yeah. This is gonna get that job done. I don't like Invictus. Uh, I do like Dior Sauvage for what it does. So for this one, I think it's really good for what it's trying to pull off, which again is gonna be a very affordable twist on those fragrances, really good for that. Yeah, a lot of sweet citrus in here, that bubblegummy kind of vibe, the geranium lavender combo that gets used in a whole bunch of modern men's fragrances. Gonna find that in here too. And I don't think it's a listed note, but there's a strong Ambroxan vibe in here. And now let's go ahead and open up Perry Ellis America. And then I can run back through these really quickly and let you know how they've changed. Well, that's the nicest bottle of the bunch, at least in my opinion. So there we go, Perry Ellis America. Little information on the back. There's your badge code on the bottom. I actually really like this bottle. Yeah, for a cheapie, looks nice. So there it is. Perry Ellis America. Nice dark blue coloration to it. So it's glass here and then it's framed in plastic. So this is not metal, this is plastic, but it does look nice and I like the coloration as I mentioned before. And the atomizer is red. So it goes along with this blue and red color scheme. All right, let's give this one a go. There's bergamot, pineapple, and white pepper in the opening here. And that bergamot, pineapple combo in Perry Ellis America is gonna remind some people of Aventus. It's super pleasant though. That's really, really pleasant. I'm gonna spray it on skin just because I wanna see if this is Aventus-y in the, in the way that Mont Blanc Explorer is, where it's just really saying, hey, we're gonna copy that DNA, or if this is the type of fragrance where it smells a little bit similar, but it's doing its own thing. For a cheap fragrance, I like it. Sweet pineapple, a little bit of bergamot. No, actually a decent amount. It doesn't really sparkle as much as I would like off the top. It's not super juicy. It's sweet, almost like a slightly syruped sweetness, but it's good. It smells good. It is a little bit in the Aventus style, though it's not directly trying to be Aventus but you can definitely see the inspiration there in the opening. Let me go back through these others and then I'll touch back on America after it's had a, a little bit to dry. First off, Levante. This is the first one, Joe Milano, the Aventus type clone. It is a poor Aventus clone. It has this unappealing, cheap woodiness to it. It's dried down a bit and yeah, just uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really pop off my skin. It doesn't smell that good. It doesn't have that really pleasant, alluring, attention-grabbing dry down that some other Aventus clones have, or certainly the real Aventus has. For me, this is a pass. Next up, Bright Visit. I like this. I like the way this smells. Green, aquatic, fresh, little herbal, some cedar in here. I like it, I like that. Now, that's not gonna be for everybody because this is not super complex but it's just a nice, woody, fresh, spicy 
little bit sweet fragrance for 14 bucks i think what i paid for it yeah that's fine not bad now trisardi my land good that's a good fragrance yeah date night casual nighttime good scent it's um uh, it's a little sweet not too sweet the leather in there is very nice tonka as well in there like i talked about before giving it some of that additional sweetness it does remind me of ch man it's not the same but it does remind me of ch man absolutely that's a good scent yeah I, I may review that one i'll feature that in some rating videos as well because that to me smells very good hunter intense it's doing its own thing a little bit now off the tester strip not quite as much sauvage and invictus together but it's still right in that same wheelhouse it's just it smells like um it's starting to very slightly go its own way. You can still pick out the similarities. It does still ultimately smell like a twist between the two. It's just not as easy to pick out the Invictus part and the Sauvage part. It's like they've started to meld together. At first, it smells like you pick out this big Sauvage blast and the bubblegum sweetness from Invictus, but after it's dried down a little, it's like they've kind of melded together and become a more cohesive fragrance here. That one, I absolutely get why some people would hype that. It makes sense. And then America. It is not as eventacy. It has changed. It's not the pineapple, the bergamot. They have dissipated a bit. It's getting a little bit warmer. Some sweetness in here. Some slight resinous sweetness. Not heavy though. So it's myrrh and amber, but not in a heavy fall fragrance type of way. And a little bit of birch in there as well. I like this one. This is good. Yeah, my two favorites are gonna be these. America and My Land. I think these are the two best of the bunch. As far as hype goes, Levante, no, it's not a very good Aventus clone. Not the worst I've smelled, but not in the upper echelon whatsoever. And with so many different clones out there, I don't think it's worth your time. Bright Visit is not bad, especially 14, 15 bucks. Fresh, woody, spicy, not something that's gonna really blow a lot of people away, but you could get a lot of casual use out of it. Now, the one that got the most hype out of these is this one, Hunter Intense, and I get the hype. Smelling this one, Invictus Sauvage Mix, a lot of people are gonna like that. Uh, I believe it's supposed to have good performance and it's inexpensive, so absolutely understand the hype that this one picked up for those reasons. And these two are my favorite of the bunch. Now, I'm gonna have to give these more wear, and like I said, I'll feature these in some rating videos, see how other people feel about them as well, but I feel like these are worth checking out if they sound appealing to you based off of the uh, note breakdowns and, and the quick run through that we did here today. Yeah, yeah, these are not bad at all. All right, guys, if you smelled any of these, let me know what you think about them in the comments below. And as always, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. See you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.